Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and this is another in the series of Python Bytes. In this one we're going to be looking at the colour array which will allow us to manipulate the colour of our clones within a cloner via of course a Python effector. That's what we're about in this tutorial so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing to bring in, as I so often do, will be a cube. Change it to 20 by 20 by 20 and give it a fillet of one centimeter. Throw this into a cloner. So I'll hold down my Alt key, click on the cloner and we've got that in there. In the count, we'll make it 10 by one by 10 and in the size 21 by zero by 20. One. and that gives us a bank of clones which are ready to go so that's great the next thing to do with the cloner selected is to bring in a Python effector switch to full control and then we can select a scripting layout and open our Python editor so that we're ready to go and then all we need to do is remove the loop hit execute and everything is perfectly set up for us. The first thing to do now is to copy this piece of code because we want to work with the color array. We're not interested in the matrix array on this occasion. So we'll change this to car for color array and change matrix to color. Everything else is working so far, so that's fine. And then we can say car let's say car zero. So we'll work with our initial clone, our clone over here in this corner. And to work with the color, we simply have to work with vectors. So we can say is equal to C4D dot vector. And then it's brackets. And I'm just going to place a single value in the brackets at the moment, which must be a value between zero and one. So I'm just going to put 0.5 in there for now. And let's hit execute and see if anything happens. Well, it doesn't, and I know why it doesn't. It's because we need to copy this piece of code. I don't want return true, but I'll just copy that for now. Drop that in there and just re remove the second return true. So what I need to do here is simply say color and car and this will update the color array. As you can see, the matrix array is already taken care of. We didn't need to touch that, but we needed to do the same thing for the color array. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So if I now hit the execute button, you can see that we've got a gray clone and that clone's value is all three values. In fact, the red, the green and the blue are set to 127, even though I've put 0.5 in there. Now we can achieve the same result. If I put 127 in there divided by 255, it will give us the same value. You can see when I execute, nothing has changed. So if you do want to work with the values that you get in the cloner, if you go into the transform here and we go into the color, if we open that and dial it down and we go into RGB, you can see that we've got values between zero and 255. So if you want to work with this range of values in the Python editor here, this is the method that you must use in order to make that work because it wants a value internally of zero, well, between zero and one. It's so this is the way you achieve it. So a single value between the brackets of our vector only gives us grayscale values because of course it's manipulating all three of these values in one hit. So it's like a uniform scale. It's like a uniform color. You could call it that and it would be quite accurate. But if you want to work with the, the red, green and the blue separately, again, it's just a, a different method. Of course, we simply have to say, let's say if we want all the, that, that clone or our first clone there to be red. If we just say one comma zero comma zero. Now our, that's the same as turning our red up to 255 and obviously our green and blue down to zero. So we're going to get fully red and nothing else. So if we hit execute now, we get a red clone. Similarly, we could do the same here. If we put a one in here and then this was a zero, we'd get a green clone and obviously a blue if we made the last zero here. 
are one and the other two were zeros. And of course, we can manipulate them in various different ways and have any color combination that we want. So that's how you go about using the color vector. So if we wish to control all of our clones, we resort to, of course, a for loop. So we can say for i in range, as always, cnt for count. Drop this into here and place i in there. And now we get all red clones. Not much point in doing that because, of course, we could come into our color here and just turn them all red anyway. So we wouldn't use this to do that. But we can do other things that are more, perhaps more interesting. If we, once again, let's bring in uh, the random module from Python. So if we say import random, and then in here we say, well, we'll, we'll define, we'll define, let's define four variables actually. So if we say rnd is equal to random dot random, Random dot random allows you to generate a value between zero and one. You just need to put brackets after it and that will generate a value between zero and one. So it's perfect for what we want to do here, because obviously we've said that we want our color vector to work with values between zero and one. So if we say random dot random, what we can simply say then is RND in there. And now all of our clones are grayscale values between zero and one. So that's perfectly good if you want to work with grayscale values. That's one way that you can work with this. Obviously, there are other methods you can use. You don't have to use random values, but it's just great for illustrative purposes. So let's move on a little bit. And if we say random dot or underscore red is equal to and then copy this and paste it in there. We can then copy the whole thing, paste it here and type green in there, paste it in again and type blue. Now we've got the vector values which will enable us to control each of these individually. So we could say random underscore red green and blue. And now if we hit execute, we get random colors. So there you go. That's the color array. Really quite simple and quite straightforward to use. But as you can see, you can take quite a lot of control of, of the color here, or full control of the color, by using this simple setup. But anyway, that's about as much as I really wanted to show you in this tutorial. So as always, I hope it's been of use to you and you've got a little bit more knowledge. And if you have enjoyed the tutorial, then please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Please leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share the video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that one's about wrapped up for now. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.